Hello and welcome to The Psychology Nexus, where we explore the fascinating world of psychology and human behaviour. In this episode, I talk about some aspects of developmental psychology. By development, we mean change over time. Developmental psychology is therefore concerned with explaining changes from birth, often referred to as child development. As we have become more knowledgeable about the flexibility of human development, Developmental psychology has moved from considering how children develop to examining and explaining development across the life course. And therefore, as well as considering child development, developmental psychology now also looks at adolescence, adulthood and old age. Human development is a large area for research. It employs a range of theories and research methods, and a great deal has been and still is published on this topic. There are several approaches to developmental psychology. One, which focuses on emotional development, follows the work of John Bowlby and Mary Ainsworth on childhood attachment. However, for this episode, I'm going to look at the work of Swiss psychologist and epistemologist Jean Piaget. Piaget and his colleagues, including Barbel Inhelder, changed how we view the child's world and our methods of studying children. Piaget was a constructivist and took the view that a child learns through active interactions with the surrounding world. Through a series of quasi-experiments with his own children, he demonstrated that knowledge is best gained through a process of action, reflection and construction. Piaget saw the child as a solitary explorer, learning and developing by interacting in their environment. He showed how children think differently from adults, arguing that adult thinking is a result of the completion of a series of innate developmental stages. All children go through the same stages, although not at the same rate. Piaget was able to demonstrate that development occurs through the interaction of innate capacities, which expand as each stage is reached, and their environment. Piaget developed four interrelated theories, stage theory, schema theory, play theory and moral theory. This stage theory proposes four stages of cognitive development. In the first stage, he called this the sensory motor stage, from birth to about age two, a child learns about and starts to control their environment through their senses and their movement abilities. During this stage, usually about eight months, children achieve what Piaget called object permanence, that is, realizing that objects, including people, continue to exist when they can no longer be seen. Before this, babies react as if objects disappear when they are covered up. Piaget called the next stage, which lasts to about age seven, the pre-operational stage. Children acquire language and their egocentrism reduces as they learn that other people see things differently. He called the third stage, from about seven to 11, the concrete operational stage. Abstract thinking has not yet been achieved, but children are able to carry out various mental tasks, operations, as long as the objects are visible, concrete. It takes to about age six for children to realise that a number of objects is the same regardless of their arrangement. Piaget called this number conservation. By age nine to 11, they're also able to conserve mass. The size is the same even when the shape is changed. And volume, for example, a tall thin glass of liquid compared to a short fat one. These achievements move them on to the fourth stage, the formal operation stage, when mental tasks can be performed using abstract ideas. Piaget acknowledged that not all adults achieve this final stage. He also argued that children need to interact with their environment in order to achieve each cognitive stage, and the model therefore expresses the idea of nature via nurture. Although the sequence of acquiring these cognitive capabilities holds up, confirming a maturational nature of development and the unfolding of innate abilities, we now see the ages applied for each stage as a rough guide. With some modification, Piaget's stage theory is still accepted, although critics, for example Donaldson, have shown that these stages are achieved earlier when the task makes more sense to a child. Others, beginning with Vygotsky, 
have stressed the social element of cognitive development. Piaget developed three more theories. His schema theory explains how people of all ages develop concepts by building simple ideas into complex ones. In his play theory, play is seen as an adaptive activity where a child attempts to fit the reality of the world into their own experience, mainly through a process Piaget called assimilation or taking in. On the other hand, imitation, the process where a child changes their behaviour through copying others, relies on a process Piaget called accommodation or change. Piaget argued that the three stages of play correspond to the first three stages of cognitive development. Mastery play is a repetition of play for the joy of it. Symbolic play involves fantasy and role play and incorporates symbols. For example, a hat is symbolic of a play role. Play with rules is when games have rules, which can sometimes dominate the play. Piaget also proposed a theory of moral development. Under age nine, children typically decide what is good based on rules taught by others. By nine, they are more autonomous in their judgments. Under nine, children decide if an action is good or not based on the outcomes, whereas from about nine, the intention is considered. Piaget's work continues of great significance, especially in education. I hope you have found this examination of Piaget and developmental psychology useful. If you like this content, don't forget to comment, like, share and subscribe to support the channel. Your support is really appreciated.